Beach Gratitude. I'll grab the one at the other end. It doesn't matter which end I sit at. Where's Dale going to sit then? What? Where's Dale going to sit? Is there only five chairs? I can grab it. What if I need you on your way down there? <laughs> yeah, that's all we need. Where's that at? Okay. It's where the pages you told me by CE. <sighs> where? CE. On the end, and then you have CE on the end. Oh, is that it? Okay. Mm -hmm. I did, it was laying on my desk. I didn't know what it was. No, it's not. Yeah, I didn't know what it was. It was addressed to you guys, so it wasn't addressed to me, so I didn't know. We pay it every year. Yeah, I think it's on it. 18 and 19? I don't see us in there. Okay, CE is pages 18 and 19. I wonder what happened. I guess I, what is it? It goes from, boy, it goes from 13 to 31. Or no, 30 to 31. This is the old one. I got an 18 and a 19, I think. Yeah. No, but, but I sent her, I sent her, uh, I sent her, uh, oh, I wanted to have the, uh, I wanted to have a copy of the lease agreement with her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Call the meeting to order the Griggs County Commission at 1 p.m. April 17th, 2014. <coughs> Stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. do we need these microphones? I don't do that. Okay. You can if you want. Don't. Nope. No, I don't. I've never been not talking about it. <laughs> Start with roll call. <laughs> Sean Steffen. Here. Ron Dahl. Here. John Wakefield. Here. Dale Peterson. Here. Tries here. Next we have... Uh, Approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any additions or corrections to the agenda that's been presented? Troy? Yes, sir. Connie? Could we add um, the state's attorney's visit with the state auditor to the agenda? I don't know, I didn't know there was a, is that? It was this morning. What's that?
we can talk about that under Jamie Tennyson. Okay. He's on the agenda. Nothing serious. I don't think. Hmm? Any other additions or corrections to the agenda? I guess I'd, in that case, I guess I'd entertain a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Is there a second to the motion? I'll move the second. It's been moved and seconded to approve the agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Meeting of our minutes of the last three meetings. Does anybody have any additions or corrections to the meeting to the minutes presented? If not, I would entertain a motion to dispense with the reading of the minutes and approve them as presented. <clears throat> I'll move to uh, dispense with the reading of the minutes for April 4th, 9th, and 9th and accept them as presented. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Ron. Is there any further discussion? Is there any discussion? Any more discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next on the agenda is the bills. I have the original invoices over here if you need to look at them.
Any questions on the bills for Cindy? There are no questions on the bills. I guess I would entertain a motion again to approve the payment of the bills as presented. You guys aren't very lively today. They all make a motion to approve the bills as presented. The move to approve the bills as presented is our second to the motion. I'll move the second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Sean? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Okay, moving on. Kelly? Oh, there you are. July 1st, 2015. 15 to 17. <laughs> yep. So this is just the contract. I see that the list of their technical equipment that they provide is pretty short. I was surprised. We need to approve this contract in order for me to sign it so we can send it back in, I assume. Yes. Is is there a provision where we could where, where we could request more money for the services that that are provided? I mean, we right now we're the state is paying half an employee, and Griggs County is is supplying a full time employee. So we're Griggs County shouldering. 50% of the cost for a service that is supposed to be provided by the state. Is there is there a provision where we can protest? Um, I, I think when we talked to Rod, I think Rod said to have the state attorney write a letter to Sally Holloway. Um, I think that's the only thing that I know. Because isn't, isn't that the situation we're in? We have, and they're, they're paying half of of the services that we provide and it clearly states that they're there to provide all the all the services for the clerk of court it doesn't make much sense yeah, the, uh, the test that they do to come up with the amount of money that they determine to reimburse the county for is you know it doesn't take into account the time that the clerk spends in court and things like that so it's just it doesn't take into account the time that the clerk spends in court the time that they spend on emails phone calls people come in all it is is this amount is just based on reimbursement for the amount spent on a case when filing it. So, you know, you know as we talked to Rod, he, he said it wasn't a perfect system. So, and I think that was the only route that he said, have your state's attorney write a letter to Sally. And but I mean, it clearly states in the century code that the, that the 
that the judicial branch of the state government is responsible for all the surfaces, services for clerk of court. There is there's no provision once we sign this to say Griggs County is going to do part of it and the state's going to do part of it. It's all supposed to be, it's either one or the other. And we, we deem the state be responsible, but they're not, they're not compens either we have, either we have too many employees for what they're paying us or they're not paying enough for the employees they have. But there is no provision to, they pick up part of it and we do the rest. The provision is either we do all of it or they do all of it. It seems like it, that's an issue with the means test that they use. Because I talked to the clerk over in, in Steel County, and they hire less people than they are able to. That I, they're they're that they must do the same. No, we are not comparable to Steel County. Um, Steel County, they're in a the district where they have calendar clerks. We do a lot more here than they do in Steel County. We do all the scheduling. We create hearings. They don't do any of that. They have their own separate people in Cass County that do that. They're but that, doesn't parents. the means test reflect that? No. I mean, the, well, I mean if they, their score is like 1.5 and they have one employee. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm asking. If, if that's yeah. the case, if they, if they provide less services, then that shouldn't happen. Yeah. I mean, that... It's, it's not just, a perfect system. When we talked to Rod, he said it's not a perfect system, and he, he pleaded, too, with saying, you know, if you cut staff, it just could be very, very challenging to provide the services that we do provide, so... Not a perfect system, though. That's a 300% no, difference. And, and he did state that, too. I mean, it just doesn't take into consideration... It only takes into consideration the time that you spent on getting into the case and filing it. And, and even that's changed since the last time we had that testing because now everything comes... The files come electronically. So we're not manually putting a lot of those in that we were before. So, you know, the only the only thing he stated was just to, you know, to write a letter to, to the Sally Holloway to state... <clears throat> yeah, I, I think we're missing the point. The, 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 this agreement clearly states that the state is supposed to be responsible for all clerk of court services. Why? And when we sign that, that means exactly what it says. All clerk of court services, we shouldn't have to pay anything or we'll have to trim our budget to reflect the half an employee that they, they deem necessary here. That's that's the whole purpose of this agreement is whether or not we agree to, to do this. And if you're telling us it takes a full-time employee to satisfy the clerk of court obligations here in Griggs County, then we need to somehow adjust this agreement accordingly because Griggs County is not responsible for paying that other half of that salary. That's just not the way this works. And And so... Either we're either we're saying that we're we're fine with living with half an employee and that's what we'll have, or we need more employees and we need to make adjustments to this agreement accordingly. The taxpayers of Grace County can't pay for something that they're not supposed to pay for. So come budget time. And that's not something I can fix. So that's something that you'll have to. Uh, well, we've we've made. I'm I'm. I'm no, you can't fix it, but everybody's going to have to be aware that come budget time, the state says we need half an employee. It's their responsibility. That's what we're going to need. That's what we're going to fund for. Or that's what I intend to fund for. There aren't, you can't give away something that, that we're not obligated to give away. No, but I want you to take into consideration that that test only reflects the time spent on a file. It does not reflect the time spent in court. It does not reflect any of the time, phone calls, emails, anything. So... And Ron did state that very clearly when we spoke to him that that number does not reflect that. So if there's an issue with that, cutting somebody is not, not going to this, this agreement clearly states that the state is going to provide all clerk of court services. And, and again, that's not something I can fix. That's something you have to take up with the state court administrator. And, so this thing is not due till June 1st. Would you like Jamie to write a letter to... Sally, well, I get some clarification. I mean, we have never asked them. We have never asked. Well, we have. We, Ron and I have actually. We we had a meeting with Rod concerning this. Oh, on the phone here. Um, I guess it, it isn't it, it it 
whichever way we want to treat it, but we can't we can't say that the state's going to pay half and we're going to say half. If, if Kelly's fine with only having half an employee to satisfy these duties, then I'm fine with it. But if you if you need more than one employee or a full employee to satisfy what you're doing, then we need to go to the state and get that funding. I, I'm split between two offices and I haven't worked this deputy. And I'm split between two offices and I haven't worked this deputy. And had I felt that there was room to cut that, I would have done that when you had asked that of us. But the state feels that there's room. They, they, say, that, they say the position is, is only a half-time position, which would, which would just be you. You're, you're split between two offices. They say that it's only a half-time position. But again, Rod says that does not cover all clerk services. I don't see Rod's name anywhere on this, and I see, and I see well, this, so this, state, this saying that the state will cover all the services. Okay. <laughs> well, I guess if you don't feel that it's if you don't feel that that you need any more employees than that, then we'll leave it at that. And, and come budget time, I, I will recommend that we follow the letter of this contract. Well, I won't. I obviously don't feel that, and I won't agree. Had I felt that there was cuts that could have been done, I would have done that from the outside. Again. No, but don't you, you have to understand that this 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 is based on. We can't provide services. We can't obligate the taxpayers to provide, to provide services that they're not obligated to provide. Well, I don't know what the answer is, but this contract isn't new. This is a contract that they've been signing for years. Rod clearly stated we're the first county that's ever had an issue with this. And because Steel County is, um, where Troy was saying, Steel County is getting, has room for one and a half employees. They're funded for one and a half. I'm saying there's something wrong with the formula they use to evaluate Absolutely. us. I agree. Okay. I agree 100%. Right. So we need to have, we need to have that adjusted. Yeah. If it says we can have six employees, I'm all for that if they'll pay for it. Seems like we need to have our state's attorney write a letter then and request. I'll get in contact with Rod and have the situation explained to me. Um, and then go further and contact Sandy and see what we can do. We have until June 1st to consider this, so it doesn't, it's not something that needs to happen today. <clears throat> From the question for Kelly, the, the dollar amount, does that increase from the previous contract, do you know? Uh, no, it looks like it's decreased, actually. I don't know what that's based off of. I think we're at 2385 right now. So. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's not had any what was done lately, so I, I don't know what that's based off of or what that is, what it is. And the same uh, employee equivalent was the same on the last contract as this one? Yeah. 4.48? Um, I think we're at 0.48, so that's really, I, I don't know why that's decreased. <laughs> yeah, we were 0.48 before. That seems rather odd, doesn't it? Yeah. I can look into that. Well, I don't think we should sign this today. Yeah, I make a motion to table until next meeting until Kelly can hopefully persuade the state that we need a reevaluation. If if it takes a one employee to do it, we need to be paid for one employee to do it. Motion has been made to table this. Is there a second? Move to second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Kelly. We're running ahead of schedule. Mm -hmm. You have the three if you want to come in. They are on page 31 to say 
skip ahead on the agenda to the abatement. Tax, and they shouldn't have been, if you look at the description, there, the city does not pay property tax, and it was not taught for three years on here. So we owe them money? Well, we abated. Oh, okay. But they didn't actually pay it for the last two years or three years? Right. Okay. These are all city-owned lots, yep. apparently. And someone, it was, um... Uh, the building of town that Mallory used to be in, we ran it for auto repair. Yeah. Yep. Main yeah, motors. Ended up being empty. Poor. So, okay. Yeah, still empty, I think. And you have somebody rent it to pay a possessor and pay taxes on it. Similar to the house. Can we handle these all with one motion or do you want separate ones? Um, I think there's the same property. There. It's the same property three oh, times. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, this is just different yeah. years. Oh, I'm sorry. 11, 12, 13. I see. I didn't look at the legal description on the second one. The third one. I'll make a motion that we uh, grant an abatement for the uh, described property for all three years. 13, 12, and 11. It's been moved that the abatement for <coughs> the north 93 feet, a lot 21, all the lots 23, 24, 22, 23, and 24, and block 60 be approved. Is there a second to the motion? I'll move the second. Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Sean? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. How long do you need, John? You don't know, do you? Ten minutes. Should we go ahead and do that? You make my wife happy. I'm, it's my anniversary today. Well. Well, we don't want this to be the last one. So we <laughs> okay, we'll jump ahead on the agenda here to construction engineers so we can get John back on the road. Thank you very much. Uh, what we're going to talk about just real briefly today is um, there's been some questions about the quality of the, the concrete slab. And we've done some further investigation. We want to present that data just so that we, we you know, it, it doesn't seem like the commissioners have had a big problem with it. Um, it seems like the architect has, has looked at one particular test report that says there's a six inch slump and then judged that the slab is defective. So um, that's what we're going to talk about. And, and I, I would tell you, if you there's, there's probably five different parameters, maybe 10 to judge strength of concrete. Uh, and judging it by the slump is just one of them. So um, I'm going to just, uh, can everybody see the screen pretty good? Okay, so for some reason it's not advancing. It's just, be, just click at this. Okay, so it's going to get a little bit technical, but not too technical. What, what we do is when you're going to, when you're, um, proposing to pour concrete, you develop a mixed design. And this is one we, we, we proposed for the slab on grade. It's supposed to be 3,500 PSI, um, three to five inch slump. And the water cement ratio is supposed to be 0.45. And that's, that's how you judge the mix. The, re the way they get that 0.45 water cement ratio is it's the weight of the water divided by the cement fly ash and type two cement. Now, I, yeah, I'm going to tell you one thing. I've been pouring concrete for 42 years. So I, I consider myself an expert at concrete and concrete materials and everything else involved. Go to the next slide. We submitted that mixed design to the architect. 
And their comments were that they reviewed it. They didn't reject it. They didn't say revise or resubmit. They didn't say make corrections. That engineer said we reviewed it. It's and to us, that's acceptable. Next slide. So here's, here's that test report the architect looked at and said, okay, it's defective. Because right here it says the slump is six inches. Okay? That floor, this particular test was taken 60 feet east of the southwest corner. Specified strength, 3,500 PSI. You can see in seven days we had 3,950 PSI. And then 28 day breaks were 5,000, 5,150, and 5,275. So from a strength comparison, it's, there's no issues with that concrete. So the last time we met, John, you were saying, well, you know, sometimes when you get a high water strength ratio or you get too much water in the mix, you're going to have problems with the surface. Okay, you were, were worried about bleeding and those kind of things. So let's go to the next slide. I just want to show you. We, we took a core sample, we drilled it and, and re from the location where that test report was taken, 60 feet uh, east of the southwest corner. So if you go out in the building, you'll see there's a patch where we took a full depth core sample. ASTM C94 is what the standard, that is right in the specifications, that says how you judge uh, slumps, okay? If you specify four inch or greater, you have a tolerance of an inch and a half. So our mixed design was based on a, a, a three to five inch slump. So if you add an inch and a half to five inch, you got six and a half. So theoretically, it should be in compliance. Of course, with the ASTM, ASTM means American Society of Testing Materials. That's the gospel in this world. So we did a, petro, they call it a petrographic examination. And that's what this core, core drill is all about. And what it does, it documents the comp composition of that particular core. And it's to evaluate the quality. So uh, the background, we had Braun Intertech come out and they, they took that sample from this 15,000 square foot slab that was placed in the fall of 2013. And that petrographic examination is done in accordance with ASTM 856, standard practice for petrographic examination of hardened concrete. You end up with a report with about 25 pages. They look at every single thing about analyzing that concrete. We've taken a, just a couple of ex excerpts out of that report, and we're going to show you those. Uh, the report says the body of concrete is in good condition, and this is referencing to that little cylinder. Uh, the concrete is hard, dense, and well consolidated, and mineral, mineral constituents appear uniformly dispersed in the concrete. And then based on observed physical properties and microscopical features of the concrete sample, the water to cement cementitious materials ratio is 0.42 to 0.48 and very close to the 0.457. They can't be definitive because it's already hardened. But um, The water cement ratio is locally somewhat lower in the upper several millimeters of the concrete. So near the surface, that area that you expressed concern about, it's it's, and, and that's due to the densification of the surface by trowel finishing. Um, the conclusion, discussion concludes, and they say concrete represented by the core sample is in good physical condition and is generally consistent with concrete described by the approved mix design. Um, the slab received a hard uh, trowel finish, resulting in a generally hard, dense, and durable wearing surface. And this was signed by Ronald D. Sturm. He's a senior petrographer for Braun Intertech Corporation. Out of Fargo. For the next. Now, there's a picture of a core that we took out of the slab. And that's the top, there's the bottom, and it says, uh, it says, note the uniform appearance of good con consolidation and even distribution of aggregate in the concrete. And that's what you look for. You see all the aggregate, how it's not just all laying on the bottom, it's uniformly distributed. So there's just the upper two inches, and again, if you look at that, um, it, you know, this cross section shows a good condition of the surface and near surface concrete. No evidence is observed of subsurface defects, including zones of trapped air or bleed water. Now, this is just some more data that is in the report, and it gets a little complicated here, but it just shows residual particles of cement clicker, clinker, and fly ash, and it it says it's consistent with a well hydrated moderately water cement ratio concrete mix. 
Uh, this is another test they do. They stain the cross section with a uh, with a, a magenta type um, uh, solution, and it has a pH indicator. And what happens is near the surface, if you have carbonation, which usually results if you use in direct heating, which we didn't, then you'll see that it doesn't stain the top surface. So it basically just tells you that um, you know the sample's okay. So you know the procedures again. We talked about ASTM. C8856 was a petrographic. Uh, we used a, you know, we had a saw cut, freshly broken, and polished surfaces. They, those, those were 45 x, is 45 times they've, uh, um, magnification. magnification. And some of the other samples were looked at it up to the 400. So, you know, I, I, the only reason we're, um, we told you that we're not going to put the floor down until we know that the concrete slab is acceptable. I wanted to make sure that you guys felt that you've got a good product out there. If you, if you, you know, um, to me, you know, when, when an architect or somebody that's not really familiar with the concrete business like we are, when you talk about judging it purely by the slump, it's like saying a, a grizzly bear is, is a safe creature just because it has fuzzy skin. So, I mean, it's, it's been a little bit frustrating to see that topic keep getting brought up time and time and time again. So we thought we wanted to put the issue to bed. Yeah, well, I just think in our case, we really need to make sure that this information gets to the structural engineer and the architect because we depend on them. I mean, we've hired them and it's their job to advise us. And I'm not an expert on this. Yeah. So I depend on the structural engineer more than anybody to uh, validate everything you're saying. Yeah. Well, we've we tried everything we can with those guys, and it just doesn't seem to make any difference. Really? And, and we're 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 just. Well, could could you send this? Uh, we will send it to anybody who wants it if they pay for it. That's about a three thousand dollar study right here. Oh, you won't send these slides no, to the architect? Not. Oh. I mean, I unless somebody agrees to pay us for it. Well, I mean. Uh, architect deserves the chance to comment and the structural engineer deserves a chance to comment it seems yeah I, I mean we'll we'll go through this I, I I would I'd love to send it if we could get paid for it for the work that we well, did to get that I mean we, we went above and beyond okay. what it takes to do the testing that we should have done I mean that's more than half the cost of the testing allocated for the whole job yeah because we, we didn't want to get into a situation where you guys said okay well we're not gonna we're not gonna pay for the concrete or we're gonna hold money back for it or you know that that's ultimately what we're trying to yeah I, resolve. I, yeah, I just want to yeah. say I'm not an expert on it, but uh, the structural engineer to me is, and we paid him. So yeah, he's he's got a letter that says, you know, I'm worried about the water cement ratio at the surface, okay. and and we've got that. And if you know, I think we can clearly. There aren't many contractors who go to this extent to yeah, no. prove that. Yeah, because and I, you know, I, I don't, I can't back up anything I'm saying here, but but I thought. That there was more than one submittal made, like there was one submittal made, and then, and I don't know if that was from one contract or one submit contractor, and then it was another submittal from another one. And well, what happened is we, uh, the the original or supplier we were going to use was not capable to get the concrete. Out. Yeah, so we and switched, and it was very close to the time we were going to pour. But and and uh, I thought there was some differences. The, the mixed designs were the same. What? Well, but she doesn't. I, I thought the architects said they were different. And she I don't said know. they reviewed them at different times, but well, I thought the mixed designs were. I thought they were different, the but, but but that's why I'd like to get the architect's comment on this so that you know she can respond and the structural engineer. That's yeah. Okay. Well, um, the other potential issue with with a wet mix, if it was a wet mix, is shrinking. So, I mean, we know the answer to that by now, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's been nine months. So, or six months. Six months. You know, the cracking that I observed just walking through there was on this end of the building. And I don't know what caused that, if there is a cause to it. There's a pretty well, with concrete, you always have, that's why you put control joints in right. a concrete right. slab. And that was hopefully that. your cracking follows the control joint. Not always the case, but. Only time, you usually might you might get a crack like like if you got a building corner right here, 
you, you try to cut here and you try it and, and you'll get it and you'll cut that way and sometimes it comes this way you know where you get a weak weakness in the plane but by the garage sir that's other leaving the courtroom i think that's a that's a pretty substantial that's there's pretty good separation in that crack there should be I mean, when as a concrete cures, that's that's why you're putting in these concrete these I don't know. That's, a, that's not in a joint. That one, I don't think. It's a no, that I know. One, we're that not, one you're one not always you're joint, always you're always not always lucky enough to get them to crack on the joints. I mean, you you two and a half times the thickness of the concrete. Right. Is what you yeah, so I, again, I didn't want to waste a whole lot of no. time. I just wanted to give you guys this information. Know that you know. But that's, no, that's where we're at. in all fairness to the architect, though, John. We rely fairly heavily on them. Let, let, let us think about that one. I, okay. I, I guess, yeah. I'm, I, I would like to get paid for the, for the testing. You know, I, I should have even had to go to this extent to present this case. It's just one of those things I took internally and was not happy about. But so. did, did someone instruct you to do the testing? No, nobody. My, I mean, I'm, I'm at risk for it, so I... Yeah. I mean, I'm and, not telling you, you guys got to pay for it, so. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we, we have a year warranty on. Yes, you do. Okay, and it would be imprudent of, of the commission to say, go ahead, everything's fine at this point and invalidate that warranty. Yes. We, we, we owe it to the citizens of Griggs County to make sure that they get exactly what they signed on for. So if you feel confident that the floor is of good condition and sound condition. There really shouldn't be any any problem proceeding forward putting the flooring on right. it. Right, uh, and, and again, uh, we just want, we wanted you guys to be informed. I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to yep no to, that, to let you know. No, I appreciate that, where, but I mean, where we're it, at. you know, you have to understand that we can't we can't take responsibility for it at this point. Hey, we're not asking you okay. to. We're, okay. yeah, we're we're going to live by the letter of the law. I mean, okay. we've got a one year warranty on the building. Okay, so that's after acceptance. Um, the the only other uh, thing that we want to address today is just talk about what's going to be happening here as of Friday. We we will have to um, because of the pay pay request and non payment we will not be on that job anymore. And I, I, I needed to. It's a it's a contractual obligation. I'm not real happy about having to say this, but until. We get these that tell you have something worked out for payment. Right now, it's as of Friday, it'll be a half a million dollars almost that that, that is due, and, and um, we're just going to have to shut the job down until we can figure out something. And I, and I, I believe you know, if if we can figure out something, even to bring one of those into into compliance, we'll we'll be there on Monday. But that's just contractually if I don't do this then I'm at risk okay. you realize for the record then that we have to we have to state what the what the facts are so that this is perceived correctly by by everybody associated yes. with this yes. okay do you want to state the facts or do you want us to do it or do you want to maybe maybe you disagree with 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 what we're going to present how do you want to do that I guess we don't know until you present it I guess so yeah I, I, I'm not sure what you okay, okay. well as, as far as as far as the responsibility for the payment for the that, that's what we're talking about here yeah I, we've got we've got we've got uh, right now certified for payment is uh, right now it's the total certified is a million four is that right John you touch me. the total certified is oh, two, two, two. one million right is what Craft Architects has certified yep. to date. And the billing and authority is we'll four hundred ninety seven thousand is outstanding. Okay. Do you want me to elaborate? Troy, no, Troy, do you want to explain it? Do you want me to do it? What do you want? Go ahead, John. Okay. Um, everybody's aware of the of the of the financing or, or the procedure that took place to build this new courthouse and, and just a real quick timeline three different votes asking the public whether or not they wanted to raise taxes to 
build the courthouse. Uh, three different times it was turned down. At which point the previous county commissioners went ahead and formed a building authority and through a provision in the law were able to levy $2.2 million worth of taxes by a simple majority vote of the authority. That in turn was to finance the building of the new courthouse along with a grant that had been applied for. At that point, the building authority signed a lease agreement with the county. And I won't read you the whole lease agreement, but the, the, the essence of it is um, the building authority is hereby issue revenue bonds to finance the construction and equipping of the facility for the county and to pay the cost of issuance in connection with the issuance and sale of the bonds. So the county has a contract with the building authority to finance and construct this facility. The fact that the county signed a contract with construction engineers for the $2.9 million is at direct odds to the contract with the building authority. Because of course, the county can't obligate the citizens to money that the citizens haven't already agreed to be obligated. Otherwise, what would be the use of our system of government? If we as county commissioners can say, we want to go build a new building here in the outskirts of town, and we sign a contract with you without having the funding in place first, that's not the way our system works. So we have no way of, we mean the county, the county has no funding in place whatsoever. There is a grant that was applied for that is not tied to any of this. It never was. It, it isn't in the budget for 2014. There is no funding source to back up that $2.9 million that, that the county was obligated to. So the grant is incidental to this. It is not tied to the building authority. So we have a grant that is out there that, that we're trying to come into compliance with that has no way to work its way into this system because of the fact that the grant was applied for when this was a public project. And when the project became private, as you might imagine, trying to get federal money from a public entity into a private entity has caused problems all through history. So there's safeguards against that. So <laughs> if, if the grant doesn't come through, and at this point right now, we, the county has zero funds allocated for this, the budget was done in October 2013. We don't have the ability to change that. The only place there's any money left is with the building authority. And when that money is expended, unless the grant has been worked out and, and they start paying on that, the county will have no choice but to be in default because our hands are tied. There's no, there was no money allocated by the previous commissioners to take care of this. And after much investigation, we had $29,000 left, all carried over from last year into this year's budget. So there, there is no way to do it. And, and I, don't, I don't know any other way to explain it than that. Other than it's a, it's a horrible deal for the, for the county, it's a horrible deal for the citizens, and of course it's a horrible deal for you of no fault of your own. But that's a plain and simple facts. So I, I, I can tell you this, um, I, I do have a contract with the county and very, with the building authority in the county. I, you've, you've got a complicated thing going on behind the scenes here. I, that's none of, none of my business. We do, you need, apparently you need some time to work some things out. We're, we've been more than willing to help you with anything you need to get that grant in place. But, um, you know, we got, subcontractors like this guy sitting here we owe money and you know we we're trying to we're trying to figure out a solution as so, are we but i mean and, and it can't be it can't be that well for instance there's going to be money if we have to if we have to leave and come back it's not going to be you know it's going to cost the county extra so it's to your benefit to try to figure out something if there's any way to do that before we if, if you can, if you can back time up until the point where we can go and reapply for that grant and do the if we can back it up to October where we can redo the budget then there's a possibility 
our hands are tied. We, we, can't no, we can no more take public money and give to you than we could go walk into the bank and rob the bank. There's no provision. It was not set, it was not set aside at the proper time. They never should have signed a contract with you. <laughs> so, you know, I, I don't know what the solution is, but again, I just, I, I felt I needed to come out here personally and tell you what the, our position is as a company. We can't be here anymore. Yep. Just, we're we're going to be spending this week demobilizing the job site. And when you guys tell us you want to want us back, we'll come back. The building authority still has funding available, right? With the, at the in the bond fund. I'm not sure how much. Yeah, they we we're you know we're they started out with 2.2 .2 million dollars. Connie would probably know that. What? I said Connie would probably know that unless Cindy knows the answer. Well, and the county's put 300,000 into this thing already. So. Not, not into this building part, though. I think so. Not into the contract with construction engineers, but, but it was into the new courthouse project. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I, again, I, I, I don't know how your financing works, and it's not my business. I don't really care. I mean, I care, but I, I, I can't. I've got one, I've got to manage my my end of the deal. No, I, I just hope that. I was just trying to figure yeah. out how much money the building authority had at its disposals to that at this point. Uh, yeah, I do. Because we're know. right now, we're, there's a grant re, uh, reimbursement request in on the EOC grant, which I don't know if we've heard anything. Bob? I made inquiry yesterday. She said that she did not have a date yet for me when they would have the final, but this is an exhaustive process and they're working on it. That was why I got back. And again, I, hopefully that comes through and then we'll be out here just as soon as the payment stream starts. But contractually, I can't continue. So I, and, oh, and, I and I got, I got to tell you, I'm very sorry that I'm not having to do this. But I, I don't have any alternatives. I can't spend money that we're not getting paid. And I don't think we do either. I mean, right. the previous county commissioner didn't budget anything for this project. So we don't even have a budget to overspend. Yeah, and, and, and again, I uh, you know I. And if the county, if the county could go spend millions of dollars on a building without the approval of the, <coughs> without the approval of the taxpayers, they would have done it. Uh, yeah, and and we've had plenty That's of the time to they tell us. A private pro right. project. Yeah. There's been plenty of time to let us know that this money wasn't going to be available. So I again, I again, I I don't want to get controversial. But I, I I'm just going to say that th this is what's happening. There's, there's no argument between us. Yeah. We, we don't know if the money is available or not. The, the, the availability of the money is dependent on whether or not this grant comes through. And, and that, if the grant comes through, you've got your money. If the grant doesn't come through, we don't have the money, you don't have the money, it's a big mess. I mean, unless, I mean, Cindy as the auditor, is, is there a way the county can pay this? The, the last meeting we had on the 25th, we brought that up about the EOC grant and whether those funds that it's not contingent on the contract and our understanding from the commissioners was that regardless of the EOC grant you have a contract with us and you're applying to fulfill that contract no. well, so we, we said we had a contract with you we have no means of fulfilling it we're not we're not stating that we don't, that there wasn't a contract a valid contract signed with you but what is being stated is that there's no means to fund that, to fulfill that obligation. We're not saying the contracts in, in that, that that wasn't valid. We'd have no means to, we have no means to fund it. It will take a, a vote of the people to fulfill the county's obligation if in fact the grant does not come through. The county commissioners do not have the authority to spend that money. Yeah. <clears throat> and we're and we're we're unless some we're not capable of financing. I understand. Right. And right. I have subcontractors like Mr. Allen Olson that have eighty, ninety thousand dollars into the project that haven't been paid. And you, you're preaching to the choir here. We we fully sympathize with everybody. We don't have the ability to do it. You, you're this is a, this is a this is a a public entity. You're welcome to come and look at the books. You're welcome to look at the way this all works. You tell us if there's a way to do this, and we'll do it. This, this, we're not disagreeing that you're owed the money. But what the fact is that you were 
the obligation was made without anything backing it up. Our, our hands are tied. I mean, it is, why would we want to withhold the money from you? <laughs> we, we just, we don't have it. <laughs> and it's not ours, it's, it's there, there is no money, we just can't. How much money is in the building authorities fund? We're not privy to that, they, they don't, they don't that. let us know. Yeah, that's a private entity. By design, to get around the vote of the people that building authority was formed to build this project, and they are not responsible to us or anybody else. But we have a contract with the building authority saying that they are responsible for construction and finance of that facility. There isn't even anything tying that grant to this project. There's no document anywhere tying that grant to this project. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, <clears throat> I, again, I don't want to take up. I know no, well, I mean, I sympathize I just, with your position. Yeah. If you can give, if you can give us an answer on how to fix this. Uh, yeah, that's that's not my business to get involved in what you guys have to figure out. So. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you guys. Emily just stepped in, so I think we'll go back to that agenda item. We, we were moving a little faster than anticipated, so we got ahead a little bit. Um. <laughs> this got to be a little more... Well, no, it, it doesn't always happen, but that's why we moved it in here, Emily. For those of you that don't that don't know Emily, this is Emily Wiggins. She's Hi, Emily. Lives in Finley, Emily. North Dakota. Um, she has been the tax director over in Steele County for okay. some time. Um, is nearly accredited. Is that is that yes. a correct statement? Yes. Um, and as you well know, we are without a tax dir equalization director at this time. Um, we would sure like you to come and help us out if you can um, but I know you have things you're dealing with as well so I thought we should get together and just see if we could formulate a plan okay. if you want to. Sounds good. Yeah I'm I mean I'm more than willing to come help out during this busy tax time. Troy knows I have a lot going on. I'm my husband is, have, has a brain tumor. He's finished his radiation, but he does do chemotherapy still. And he'll do that all the way through September. So he's doing really good. You know, as long as nothing changes, I don't expect too much with it. But just something to be aware of. Um, I'm also pregnant. So I'll be having a baby here end of July, beginning of August. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hopefully not sooner. Um, so I have appointments in step two, and you know I, I wasn't quite sure exactly what you guys were looking for. Um, a few days a week, two to three, is probably all I can promise right right now. So, but that might help get through the assessment season, the equalization season. And I am still on the, the ballot to run in Steel County for auditor. Right. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to make that clear up front that I do still intend to do that. And, you know, just so everything's up front with you guys. Mm -hmm. I think at the stage we're at in the <clears throat> reassessment of the property in, in Griggs County, we were somewhat of the opinion, I guess, that it was probably a part-time position on an annual basis anyway. Okay. It is, do you feel that's a correct assessment of the workload in the 
tax equalizer. I know you were the deputy auditor too, so right. it must have been a part-time position in Steele County. And Griggs County is exactly the same amount of geography. Yeah, and I mean, from my understanding, you guys have a few more assessors um, over okay. here doing the work where in Steele County, I did a lot of the assessing. So okay, you did. A lot, lot of time, especially, you know, six months of the year, that was. You did a lot of the townships? Right. Okay. And a couple cities, Hope and Laverne, I did those as oh, well. Oh, okay. So. So that took a little more time. So it was maybe a little more three quarters tax director over there, but okay. tax director, I mean, it clearly has its busier times like most positions, um, right. you know, December, probably through June, you could find stuff to do. I mean, there's plenty to do, but it does slow down after that quite a bit. Okay. So what, what time schedule would fit you? I, I mean, what, what, would be your, what would be your recommendation for the next three, four months if you were to take this job? How, where, how would you want to work? How, how many days? How would you want to, how would you, would you want to set it up on an as-needed basis? Um, what, would be, what would be preferable? Probably, yeah, two to three days, maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays as needed, or see how it goes. Not really, you know, I'd, I'd have to get familiar. I know you guys have Vanguard. Um, so it'd take me a little bit to go through that. And I am not friends, but, you know, I'm acquaintances with Ryan from Vanguard. So he'd be more than willing, I'm sure, to get me up to speed with that. But just kind of see where you're at. I'm not sure, you know, how much would need to be done or where she was at. Barb was very good as, as far as what I knew of her at keeping on top of everything. So. Yeah, I think you're right. So I'm all in favor of, of moving forward if you desire and being flexible and letting you, letting you work into it and give us guidance on what needs to be done and how much you need to work. Okay. Sounds good. Um, compensation level? Do you have well, maybe we should give her some time to propose that to us in writing and, and give oh. us some time to think about it and see what she... Okay. Yeah, and I'm you can, not sure where you guys are at with any of that. You know, that's something we certainly can discuss. We'll have to discuss that at some point. Maybe okay. you should get together with Cindy and just kick the tires here and see, find your way around and see where the records are kept. And, mm -hmm. and then also, yeah. you can get some idea of... <clears throat> Uh, where we're at and that will help you decide how much time you're going to need to put in and then we can get together again at the next commissioner's meeting and see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And Cindy should also be able to give you an idea of what's budgeted for the, for the position also. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Somebody want to put that in the form of a motion, or are you guys just going to let me be the king today? <laughs> yeah, you can be the king, I think. <laughs> well, I must change. <laughs> uh, I, I make a motion that, that we uh, allow Emily a week or two to make a decision and, and give us a proposal. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm in favor of. Uh, well, I'm in favor of hiring her on board if she's willing to <coughs> if she's willing to work into the system. I think that's fine. So I, I make a motion we give her two weeks to or a week or two weeks to give us a proposal and we can act on it at that time. Is there a second to the motion? I'll second it. Seconded by Ron. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Sean? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Troy, vote, Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Thank you for coming in, Emily. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I got a note that we need a 10 minute break. <laughs> you did. I did. You put that in the form of a motion? And make a motion to take a 10 minute break. <laughs> Second. 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 <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 There you go. Motion carries. 10 minute break. Who made the motion? I did. Made the motion, yeah.
Well, you made the more fun of it. I just read it for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Sean, did. Sean did. Okay. So I haven't had a chance. No. Yep, top of the key. Maybe it'll work into the system. That's cold water you keep in your fridge, Cindy. <laughs> well, some of it was ice. Some of it I didn't have enough. What are they doing? So what are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? This is an ice cream. It happened about 10 mm -hmm. this morning or 11. Um, Jamie had asked me like Tuesday or something. He said he was going to go see this big dog. And I said, sure, yeah, well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, I'd tell anybody in this room. And somehow, Bob Hope got the hold of that email where I told him that was fine. And he demanded to, to have it recorded. The audio recording, or were you? You want to be the judge. Mm. So, so, oh, <laughs> okay. so what about Bob? What's that? So, what's it about? I mean, he asked me a lot of questions, like, you know, just in general. Mm -hmm. I mean, so he's on his own personal video, because I don't know who is. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah, I did more. I went through the 2010 commissioner meeting minutes, and, and I took a paragraph, and I put it into a timeline. And I said, these are things that are question on me. And I said, you're welcome to take them up here and ask any questions you want to. Okay. Just to know. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> because we got to. Okay, Corey's got a hand on it, not Well, we didn't want to get a third commissioner involved. I was going to call you about No, I don't want to be. Yeah. There's about eight rows on the north side of each field that tipped over. Oh, interesting to see what the moisture is. Well, I've heard guys have already been found by Janet. Yeah, it's down like 16th. Really? All from 27. Yeah. You know, they decided not to go. So that's yeah. just a lot of money there. Yeah, yeah really good. I moved them all there right this winter. Of course, the water. <laughs> but luckily, uh, luckily, the wells right there also just came out as well and went up into the building. You know, all the cars are clean, all the cars are clean, 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 the cars yeah, it's really weird. It's always been wet inside here. Looks like Colin's got some rocks. I did mine recently. I did mine recently. I used the red witchy pipe. And I got that man and I'm really good
Where's their recorder? Would they have a couple shots of alcohol? Yes. <laughs> she did. <laughs> She's had I'm sure that's right. Yeah. Who was, was it you talking or John talking? I don't even remember. When she started to laugh. John. John, okay. That's what I thought. It would just, uh, yeah, that would have been probably a good call <laughs> for her to have the I couldn't remember her name and I didn't want to call her call. That would have been awesome. <laughs> she, she would have accepted. Yeah, you could find something more politically correct than that, I think. <laughs> Easter, and then I got one granddaughter's birthday, and then I'll come back for the main meeting and sure. be here then until June. Oh, yeah. June 10th. Did it get cold, cold down there, too? No, not, it's not like here. It seems like it's usually 10 degrees warmer, but God, lately it's been 20 degrees warmer. Yeah. So if it's 40 years in the 60s. Well, if it does get cold, it never lasts. Sometimes, like if it snowed real hard, well, I don't know, the first part of December, that snow might last for a month or so. Oh, yeah. But if it's, most of the snow comes in March, and the sun's up high enough sure. and, and it's warm it enough. So, yeah, it doesn't last very long. Mm. I thought that was me hitting it. It has to be somebody else. Oh, <laughs> Oh, he came and signed it. 
I didn't even see that. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I see you must have signed all these. Okay. I saw all that. I saw that. Then I need your signature on three abatements. It should be three in a row. This is both sides on this one. So oh. It's three in a row. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it has the there. Call the meeting back to order. It's 2.15. Travis. Now you can tell us what a fibrotic linker <laughs> is. Well, I guess I'll start with that then. Um, we have a fiber optic link between uh, the courthouse and the social service building uh, that does all our data for internet, uh, file server, and, all and so forth. Um, what uh, was happening, um, we were looking into who was actually going to do locates for us in North Dakota One Call uh, on that. Uh, Keith Munson was supposed to be looking into that um, because of this whole change that ball got dropped. So right now, that cable is not is not registered with North Dakota One Call. So if uh, somebody calls in, wants to bury something, we run the potential risk of that fiber being, being cut. Um, I did talk to uh, Keith from Ernst Trenching, they're the company that actually put the, the fiber optic in, in the ground for us. They will do locates for us on a per, per locate this, uh, plan. Uh, he quoted me $240 per locate on that. Uh, that means anytime North Co or someone calls in North Co One call and they're in the area of our cable, they will be dispatched out to do, do that locate. MLGC won't do that? That's, I asked them to do that and they, they refused me. And that's what Keith was looking into is he wanted them to do it for us. Mm -hmm. And um, from my, that's where it was left at, I guess. So. Okay. Uh, these are the options I've looked into what we could do. I, I'm not saying we have to do this, I'm just saying these are, so, well, something needs to be done, basically. I'm not sure what what would be the best, but ideally MLGC would be able to do that relatively e easily because they're in the, in the area. The cable is by their cables as well. Um, it's, I don't want to say it's likely or unlikely that the cable ever be cut, but we should get it registered and have someone do, you know, whether we do it internally, we have Ernst Trenching, or if someone can speak with MLGC and get an agreement with them, uh, whether they do it for free or if they do it on a per, per locate bit, uh, basis as well. But uh, just to give you an idea, um, I did get a look at what a new um, locating wand would cost. Those are about 1600 bucks for the entry level ones. They go up to 5000 for the, the crazy stuff like that. I did also speak with Keith from Ernst Trenching. They, he is willing to sell us a used one for eight hundred dollars, and then come for two hundred dollars, come up, show us how to use it, um, and the maintenance procedure for it, and so forth. So that's another option. If we purchase that equipment from him, not a new one, but a used one, it, I, I don't, I don't see benefit of getting a new one. I guess, but I want to just give an option of, of what that was going to actually cost. So, how about? Uh the cable company in town? Uh, mid kind of Communications, I guess I have not spoken to them that they would be willing to locate that for us. They have a local fellow here too, don't they? Yes, they do. I mean, that's something we could pursue as well, ask them what, what they would charge for. Did, when that was trenched in, was it gps uh, When it was trenched, um, we contacted with Ernst Trenching. So they're the ones that actually went, went out and designed the cable run as far as where it was going. We just gave point A and point B. They they went with the right away where they could do it. They you know they called for the one call got where fiber or where everything else was as well, and then they designed that out. I know, so. but do we know where it is? Well, we have a, an idea where it's at. I could go. I could guess. I could show you where there's pots going that you can see every once in a while. It's pretty much a straight run, um, but again, too, so it, since it's not registered, it never gets marked when uh, when North Dakota one calls. So place. they board it. Yes, they board it. They did directional boarding with it. So. Okay. 
you think they'd have GPS coordinates for that? Um, I, I, they probably have like plot coordinates, uh, with general vicinity coordinates. I'm not sure if it'd be GPS. There's, um, I can't remember the program. North Dakota One Call requires us to it. it it's a, um, I think I'm not sure exactly what the terminology is showing where the cable is run, and that's what gets submitted to them to be registered. Uh, and then what happens is every time there's a call, I think it's about $1.50, a fee is assessed to, would be to us or whoever actually does the, the registering of the cable then for that, so. So is the main tie-in to the, it there or is it here? Is that a branch line to here? That's a branch line from courthouse to social services. So that only services social services at this point. Right. So if that's if that's cut, we still have essential services. Here. We still have, yes, we still okay. have internet active. That's that uh, cable is done through MLGC. Okay. Then the state of North Dakota, we, our county in state of North Dakota, goes through them for that services. Uh, the idea too was um, there is a tower at the uh, social service building. Uh, currently, the county shop is run, its internet is from here as well. Mm -hmm. We're renting some cable pairs from the phone company and using a point-to-point -point DSL system. That technology is quite dated and the connection speed is very slow for that. Uh, the idea was too that we would be putting a wireless link between social services and then the county shop. And that was going to be researched this year as far as what, uh, what would be needed and um, if we could utilize the old wireless equipment that we already have, that we're using in place now as a temporary gap to the sheriff's office in the bank of, well, the old bank of the last mm -hmm. building, so. Any the, the MLGC doesn't have fiber and down? They do. We, when we were researching this, I called them and asked if we could rent pairs from them, lease pairs, or even use their own conduit and to run our own fiber optics line through that. Uh, they said because of liability reasons that they would not be able to do that. So they actually the ones that recommended Ernst Trenching for, for that connection or to look into as far as running our own private fiber optic link between, between the two buildings. But why don't you just buy a internet service on both ends and have a VPN? Connection? No, the, the, the internet service itself would be, um, this is a private link. So there, the, that link does not actually get over the internet. It I know that. Why? And then, That's my question. Why? Why not just a VPN? It would not be fast enough to service the, the needs of uh, the amount of data that needs to go between the two buildings. It's more than just internet. It's all the file servers. It's all the systems that have to actually come back. You don't use terminal services network? We can, but it was not ever set up for that. So ever, all the file servers are here. <laughs> Yeah. The terminal service is a remote application in which oh, the computer logs into another server here. I know what it is. I know what it is. That's how the world works. Yeah. Yeah. Is there is there enough is there enough capability in that building right now to move everything into the social services and everything? Is there enough capability right there? Uh, the the I guess from the plan that was sent to me, there is some storage building or storage rooms that were proposed to become offices. Is that correct? No, no. I mean, do we have the do we have the fiber optic capability in this building to handle everything that that we handle right now in the county? Absolutely, it's all going through here now. Yep. Yeah. What will happen? Is that link over there is only there because the the network for the county is not set up to use terminal services, and there you must install it clients right on their lap on their desktops and they log right into the server yeah it's all the, so the machines themselves are connected via what's called active directory right they connect in they map network drives to, to store all their files on it uh, <coughs> internet and services security applications are all signed through that system then. but if you use the terminal services network you would have a much less requirement between the two locations uh, true as far as long data needs to be able through because all you're sending is just the a screenshot file. Yeah, basically. So, or if but then we would have to get licensing here and a new server for to handle that. Or if or everything was under one roof, we wouldn't need any of that. True. But it, even even yep. if you're under one roof, you need a lot more horsepower to run it like this. Oh, I know. I understand. Than you do with the terminal services yeah. network. But it, it uh, could be it could be it could be yeah, it could be drastically improved upon under one roof. That we would need to oh absolutely horsepower run it like we are. Okay. But then the, the issue that becomes is how we link the, uh, I guess, the county shop. So that connection is quite dated. I mean, something needs to be looked into as far as replacing that and upgrading it to a, a, a faster, faster service that's limited. 
what what do, do they require there? What are they doing? Um, I think right now we're about 760 acres away to that building. Using the no, I mean, what do they do there? I'd be a couple of computers, and then if that system was on our current phone system, we need to upgrade that too as well. And that's why we were looking into, um, since the tower is already there, uh, utilizing the tower services and utilizing our wireless equipment and connecting the county shop from county shop to the social services building. And since the fiber optic link is over there, we'd have all the, the amount of capacity that we require for that. But Couldn't they just have their own independent service? Isn't our fiber optic down to that end of town anyway? Um, this, this is not, this, this is a state's fiber optic. We're, we're on the St. Louis Code of Tobacco and they handle that connection into the state then. Uh, that connection from the state, I'm not certain what the cheapest route for that connection would be to get set up for it. Um, and then uh, ideally then the system would still need to uh, connect back into to our servers. We still run, we would still be running a slower connection through a VPN or through another. I don't know if the state would allow you to do that anymore. Yeah, I'm not certain as far as if they would hook up another, another server. I mean, what applications do they use at the county shop that's on our server? Basically file servers for, for the system then. So Just storage. Keeping, you know, as Word documents, Excel documents, and so forth. Any, um, any, I'm not sure if he actually access that any databases on the server at this point. I don't believe so. I think everything else is uh, web-based for him. So his internet gets <coughs> all, his internet, his, uh, the only outlooking firewall is this one here. He's not going directly to the internet from the shop? No, he's got a private link between the shop and here through a um, right. rented pairs of uh, telephone cable that we get from right. the DC. Mm -hmm. I guess the, the, the issue on the table right now is a locator. I think we should my personal opinion is we should continue to look for somebody to do that for us. I don't have much interest in the county owning a locator mm -hmm. for uh, two blocks of cable. <clears throat> I, don't either. I don't have much, much interest in the county owning two blocks of cable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's water under the bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Is that something you can find somebody to do that? Uh, I've already contacted MLGC and they de denied me that they would not locate that for us. Well, there's got to be somebody who'll do Mid -continent it. Mid-continent. <laughs> well, he found somebody. Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The, yeah. the trenching company will do it. Yeah. Okay. No, did, did they give you a map that is adequate to um, get it registered with one call? They did not. I'm assuming I could get that from them. I would think. I would. Yeah, I would, I would assume as well. We could request that for it. Which we would, yeah, if, if we were actually doing the locator ourselves, we would have to register with North Dakota one call. Um, if they're, you know, it depends on who takes responsibility of that cable, I guess. That's what we have to determine as well. Well, you don't have any choice. We're going to have responsibility. It's just who we hire to locate it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it seems to me that we should get that map from them. It must, they must have a city map that they added a layer to or I something. I would assume so. <clears throat> Get that to North Dakota one call, and then hire them to do it for now until we can find unless we can find somebody locally to do it. Apparently, there hasn't been a need to locate it at, up to this point. Uh, we would we're no, we're not aware if there is a need. We don't get actually this. Well, you know if it got cut. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we would be well aware if it does get cut. <laughs> That's probably running parallel to MLGCs. Yes, I'm assuming so. So they, it's probably quite in the vicinity of those cables. So right. that's what I will say. It's unlikely to cut. You know, it, it, is, it can happen, but it's probably not too likely. But right. and then again, too, I'm not sure if it cuts across the place that's completely open. Then nobody will know either. Which it might on our property. I think. I don't think there's anything else going where it comes from. So. How many applications run on the server? As far as you got an accounting program, yeah, accounting program, the um, welfare program, or is it the a lot of stuff is, is moving towards the state operates those systems. So a lot of stuff is moving towards um, 
in web-based. There is some live terminal system that the state uses for social services. Um, there is our file server for our um, um, document handling, DocuPro. That's just based on SQL database that is stored on there. Um, it's run on that system then for indexing and uh, searchable documents for that. So how many servers are you running? Uh, we have one server that is a virtual server, server that has um, three virtual services on it, servers on it, uh, two Windows-based ones and a Linux-based one. Uh, the two Windows-based ones, one is the Active Directory, that's the account management, handling, uh, security protocols, and so forth. Uh, it also does updates, um, uh, security as far as the antivirus programs. Uh, the second one is our file server that handles all the documents themselves. Right. Then we have a second uh, physical server sitting here uh, that goes and pulls all the backups from those other servers. So it takes images off of those things for... Just, for, a, just a depository. Then. Yeah, repository for that. And then that system off-sites off, off that backups to a server in West Fargo for keeping uh, off-site data retention. And those two servers were re, uh, reallocated from, they were the last ones we were utilizing uh, before. So they, were, they were, were powerful enough for what we need to do in the future, but they're quite powerful just to have that one backup. For it seems like if we had to, in the future, if we had to do something with a server, buy new Windows license or new Microsoft license, you must have a Microsoft license for every machine. There's it's called a Cal or Client Access license. Right. Those are needed um, for each desktop machine that connects into the server. Then yes. So the office is on the server. No. Microsoft Office, you mean, or no? Microsoft Office is a separate license. Then. So that is also purchased through uh, the open network or open platform from Microsoft. And we actually, since we're a state agency with the state of Dakota, we get qualified for the cheapest pricing tier from Microsoft. Right. right then. But it just seems like a terminal services network would be much less difficult to operate than, than that is not true. Got. It would be more more difficult because what we'd be doing is. You, you're offsetting the cost of the, the client machines, so they wouldn't be as powerful. They could go down in, in scaling as far as CPU power and memory, but then you're moving that load to a server then, uh, licensing for that and so forth. Um, it does become profitable when you get larger. I'm not sure exactly where that is. I have never done a um, cost analysis for that. You know, Would it be cost effective for the county at the current number of computers we have to move to that? Um, my guess right now is probably not, but if we if we do go forward in the future, that is something to we'll definitely look at. Especially because it's going to be time the servers need to be replaced. Those te that technology is going to change again. Prices are going to change. It might come into more more reasonable to do so. I mean, we're on a terminal services network with 25 users. What it does is if you have other if you have multiple locations, it decreases the amount of infrastructure you need to have those remote locations we spent a lot of money on putting fiber to another building and now we're talking about spending a bunch of money to get a bigger pipe to the county shop that none of that would be necessary on a terminal services network the the, the, the money that we prefer the county shop uh, what we're looking at is utilizing existing wireless equipment we've already paid for yeah and our cost would be probably a tower at the county shop if we have to look at the height as far as if that would be feasible. Okay. Because we did look at fiber to the county shop, but it, because it, for one user or two users, it was not cost effective. And that's why we're looking at the, the wireless option for that, I guess. <coughs> I'm sorry, I sidetracked us that time. <clears throat> I guess I, I would like to entertain a motion that Travis gets a map and registers that cable with North Dakota One Call, and if needed, we have North Dakota One Call call. What's it? Trenching? Ernst? Ernst Trenching offered to uh, locate it for us. Yeah. See, I'm not certain if Ernst would then, if they did that service, if they would be the ones actually registering it. I'm concerned about how that procedure would I don't be. think so. Because the, whoever registered is the one that actually gets the call, and then they have 48 hours to locate it. Right. That. So, um, I'm, I'm Well, I guess you can ask the question. I'm not 100% sure either. Yeah, so I guess I need to determine that for sure if they're actually be registering it and taking over that, or if we would be obligated for it, I guess. 
I assume that we're the owners, so they would just be contracting to us. We would give we would, we would, we would give North Dakota one call their number as a contract cont oh, as a contact. Okay. But we own the plant, mm -hmm. so I think I think it's still upon us to register it with one call. Okay. Would you want me to look into the possibly on locating as well? If they if they do it, that might be cheaper go, just go because the because they're local. Yeah. Just because yeah. the because then it's not the drive time. It's right. the local guy. That's also yep. as well. Well, also moved if you can, but I can't repeat everything you said. So as long as Cindy has it, I so move that we do that. Well, if if I understood the last comment correctly, the motion should be that the plant be <clears throat> registered with North North Dakota One Call in whichever manner is the proper one, and I don't know that, and that Travis check with Midco to see if they're willing to locate for us and if so take the cheaper of the two options between Ernst Trenching and Midco. You mm -hmm. can second it now. I'll move the second. Second by Sean. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Go ahead, Cindy. Um cost. You might want cost in there or up to a cost amount or what cost? Well, there's it, a cost to do, for trenching to do it, isn't it? That's what he's Two hundred and fifty dollars a locate, right? Okay. Two forty. Yeah, two forty a locate, and then whatever cost would be from. And then North Dakota, North Dakota, Dakota one call. call will bill us a dollar and a half every time they get a call. Yeah, and then I guess whatever my time would probably be an hour to get in register from the server. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Sean? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. Thanks for bringing that to our attention before somebody dug it up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess yep. the next thing I I'm have, uh, next thing I have, uh, Dennis from the VA office contacted me. Uh, the state uh, veteran affairs is moving or looking to move towards um, paperless uh, filing and so forth. Uh, he asked me to get with them. Um, I spoke with uh, Dan from the veterans office. And he got a list of requirements as far as what they what they needed in their office what they're looking for for that. Uh, it's basically a modern computer, a multifunction printer, scanner, copier. Uh, then they have uh, a special card reader for uh, security for cataloging to that, and then also a uh, electronic signature pad for signing electronic documents um, for the, for the, the people that come through there for that. So. Um, I got an estimate together of about 37.30 for all that equipment and labor to set everything up uh, for that office for him. That includes uh, uh, printers and extra toner for uh, to have on hand. Sure. Well, so. Now th this isn't an imminent issue, is it? We can budget this for next year. Um, I guess I, I I, it didn't sound like it, it was something like it was that was real quickly, but I, I'm not certain as far as when. Uh, Dennis said the state uh, the, the office is going around inspecting their their facilities and what they have and what they need and so forth. So, yeah, right. but I, I'm not certain as far as the dead, if there is any deadline or when we should. Because I, he was gonna he was going to visit with Steele County and see if <coughs> they wanted to share in this okay. because they don't really have a place to put him. Okay. So. I wonder if we shouldn't sit on this for a little bit. That's a potential where they would share cost share of the equipment. Or something. Okay. He, he didn't know what they were going to have in mind. Go ahead. I Sean. think in his last presentation, he was just suggesting that's what they were going to move to. It wasn't a dead He was talking about <coughs> the next year or two, I think, if I remember right, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, I guess from Dan, I, to my understanding, there was no urgency as far as this had to be done. Right, right. Quickly within a few But months. it's something that they're going to move to. They're, they're wanting that. That's what they're wanting from. I, 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 I'm not sure if it's within a year or a year and a half to have all the offices in North Dakota equipped with this kind of right. uh, setup. We have some relatively severe budgetary constraints in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess what I'll probably do is I'll email this to Dennis. Uh, please can be speaking with Steel County as far as this is well. Yeah, that would be a good idea. I would like to see what the commissioners in Steel County would like, okay. if they would like to share this office space or equipment or I don't know what they have in mind. I, you know, they maybe haven't even visited about it yet. So, okay. so we'll, we'll wait and see. I think that happens. was Dennis's intent when you left. I think so. Okay. I will email that information to them. Okay. Next thing. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware, there was a, uh, a vulnerability that found in a uh, protocol open SSL. It's an um, uh, encryption system used on about 60 to 70% of all web servers in the world. Um, we were notified of this on Tuesday uh, about the, the bug. Uh, there was a patch, I think, Wednesday, and then up that Thursday, we actually updated our web server. Uh, for that vulnerability. Uh, the uniqueness about this though is the, the vulnerability actually is undetectable as far as if someone actually did reach your system. There is no records, there's no logs, there's nothing left behind on that. Um, so the group that are, there's a lot of security experts out there recommending password changes and then recertifying your SSL certificates. Uh, SSL certificate is the encryption system that when someone connects to our website, that two-way handshake encryption that's what is utilized. Um, what I'm asking today is basically this the time to go through and change all the passwords and get a new certificate from the state reissued for that. Uh, the, the certificate itself has not to be repurchased, it just needs to be reissued. So it's submitted to the state, they send all new encryption files and so forth. So I've estimated three to four hours to, to accomplish that. There's about 20 some passwords that need to be updated on the server and then the corresponding equipment that connects to it needs to be updated so it can properly get back to it. I, I, like I said, I can't, I haven't seen anything that <coughs> indicates there is a bit of breach, but there is nothing, no way to detect that. So it's more of just um, ensuring that we're not vulnerable for that. This so is related to that heart bleed? Heart bleed, yes. Yeah, which was basically targeted at the big, big yeah, the information OPS, sources. Yeah, OpenSSL yeah, is yeah. very common yeah. and, and it's utilized in Linux or uh, CentOS and Red Hat yeah. operating systems, which is over 60% of all the web servers in the world. <coughs> so it's a big problem, big yeah. hole. That well, we need to do it, but more than likely, what they were looking for was information on the huge I, Yahoo, it's, it's, Google, yeah, it's, and like that. It's doubtful that, that we were could, targeted. Right. It's doubtful that we actually see yeah. the breach that any information was. But <coughs> what happens is if, if it was, then they have all our passwords mm -hmm. and our encryption keys, which then they can decrypt any data that's sent to us. And so if we're going with this new website, if we start collecting credit card information or private information, that is then potentially vulnerable yeah. to attack. So it's been a lot for a bigger, a bigger fish. But. And yeah, the, the problem is that hole has been about two years yep. in the wild. 2011. Yes, so it's, it's potentially, you know, they don't know if someone's actually known about it before this, has actually exploited it, so it's one just to... Uh, I'll make a motion that we authorize Travis to uh, change the passwords and... Update the SSL certificate. Update the SSL certificate, if they can keep it under four hours. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been moved that we authorize Travis to update the SSL certificates and <clears throat> change the passwords on the server. Is there a second to the motion? I'll move to second. Seconded by Sean. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Sean? Hi. John? Hi. Ron? Oh. Mixed you guys up, Dale. <laughs> yeah, he messed uh, us up. <laughs> motion passes. Troy voted aye. Right, right. <laughs> and the uh, last thing on my list is we have um, two two machines currently that are running Windows XP, which has been uh, end of life on that. I mean, there's no more updates to it. Um, what we need to do is either replace those or update the operating system on them. They are, uh, the one machine actually we're going to be, I propose to use one of our old machines that we took in um, or reallocated for another office, and that has Windows XP on it as well, but it's more powerful. 
update the operating system to Windows 7, and then put that in the, uh, the core vaults uh, computer system, so it's not real powerful. And the other one is in the, uh, the sheriff's office uh, that um, uh, Nikki has for, for her computer. So, And that one still has plenty of CPU power and memory, so upgrading to Windows 7 is not an issue. So, uh, so for the license and then the time to do that, I estimated four to six hours for setting up, transferring all the software, re, re authenticating everything. Uh, with that six hours, that's $840 to, to upgrade those two machines. We already own the licenses? Uh, no, we, we don't own the license, so we'd have to purchase a Windows 7 license. Those are $150 each, two. and we need two of them, so $300 okay. for the license. Could you jump to Windows 8 if you wanted to? Um, I would not recommend Windows okay. 8 on this network. The state okay. That's systems, fine. they have not recommended to me. Okay. I generally don't want to be moving to something that's not tested yeah. on everything. So. Okay. So that's reasonable. Total of 840 total, so that would be the license and then my time to... There's a lot of people that are staying at 7. Yeah. Then I have to train everybody on Windows 8. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought maybe we could skip 7 and just go from XP to 8 and train on just well, you, 8. But you can. <laughs> but it, it operates a lot differently. It's kind of uh, touchscreen based, and if you're in an office environment, it's not the handiest. Yeah, is I, what I've been told. I, yes, yeah, that would be my assessment as well. Yeah, I've got Windows 8, and I don't especially like it. It's, okay. I, I'd prefer to be on XP myself, but. <laughs> You can. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you could buy a computer really cheap. Well, probably. <laughs> but you need a motion to... Do. Uh, you. Yeah, I move that uh, we have him upgrade those two computers to Windows 7. Is there a second to the motion? I'll move the second. Seconded by Dale. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Sean? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. That should be all I have. Cool. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thanks, guys. This morning would have been in the budget. This would have been in my equipment budget along with one. It's such a small amount. Right. And I've got funding in house to take care of that. So one the radar for the casing was a, a surplus unit that we bought when Paul was here for 10 years ago. Right. My question So you're, up, you're upgrading one, or do you have a unit that doesn't have a radar? Or? We're upgrading. The one we've got is basically not functioning, and the cost repair arm will always value. Can, can, you mark that car, can you mark that car for me? What's that? Can you mark that car for me? <laughs> Which one? The one with the non functioning radar. <laughs> <laughs> it's red. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, Troy? Is that me? Oh, Sean could throw on speaker. Oh, okay. The microphone. <laughs> My question was that 24 7 budget yep. is basically if somebody has, is convicted of too many DUIs and they have to go in and get tested once a day or <coughs> once a week or whatever they do, that, that is a reimbursement for our administrative expense for performing those duties for the regional corrections. Is that correct? That has nothing to do with regional corrections. Or state, or whoever. 
We're, it's a reimbursement for our administrative expenses. Right. 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 So we're buying a piece of equipment. The money is eligible expenses off the equipment by the state to the program is, is enforcement efforts, uniforms, there's a whole list. And a lot of agencies use that money to, to purchase equipment for their sheriff's office. They use it to, uh, to buy more food for breath testing. Right now the program is more than covering itself. Mickey's gone. I'd have better numbers for you if I know any one of those to me. Well, I just, in my head, if you start spending money that is for the reimbursement of administrative costs. It's not just, re it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's their cost for taking a test. It pays for their tube. And the additional money goes into a fund and it can be spent by law enforcement. We have to buy the tube, though. Right, That's, it, it pays for the tube. They're paying for the tube, we're not. They're paying for the tube through their, their $2 a day on that testing program. We use the money from that fund to buy the tubes. Some of the defendants start on the program with tubes and they switch to go to the bracelet because it's easier for them financially and for work purposes. A lot of them aren't on the tubes. They are for a week or two or a month and they switch. Or switch back. Is there an installation cost of above and beyond this too no, or not? We put it ourselves to plug in cigarette lighter type power toy. No danger of that budget running short by taking five hundred dollars. No, no chance. Okay. What's the time frame on it? Oh. I don't know if the end date is on it. It's, it's a there's a performance period on it. We we have to have to buy it by a certain date. Do you need it? You need it now, though. Yeah, I would I would prefer to have it last fall when they're going to do the grants. They did. And the announce until this when they brought paperwork up. So. Yep. Looks like uh, vouchers need to be submitted by June 30th. The state, there you go. state's fiscal yeah, I don't have, I don't have state's fiscal year. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually got till 15th of July to submit it. Turn on this is very similar to allow some of the DES in between days. They read the check as we'll soon as they get the vouchers. It's the same we bought our cameras through, we bought we bought traffic safety vests through there, they provide us equipment through that. It's, it's used by everybody. Any more questions? No, I, I don't see any problem with it then. Okay. Prove it. So when they need it, then they have to sign off on it as a contractor. I don't have the paper. I have it right here. Okay. <coughs> I'll make a motion that we authorize Troy to sign the grant request. Been moved to approve by signing of the grant request request for the radar upgrade. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Seconded by Dale. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Sean? Aye. Ron? Aye. John? Aye. Dale? Aye. Troy votes aye. Motion carries. I'm the contractor? Correct. You can fill in those four lines, whatever it is. Anything to any size it as a test? Thank you. You watch it. Thanks, Bob. Oh, Bob, one more. The, uh, the grant. 
can, can you just, well, I, I, I caught it, but I didn't catch all of it. As I far sent an uh, email yesterday to Karen Hilfer. She's the contact point for DUS. I'm going to ask her for an update. Because right now, she doesn't have one. They're in the middle of going through it. Okay. She said, as soon as they have something, they'll be back. Tomorrow. You'll let us know right away. Then. You'll know first. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Gabe. Yes. I thought maybe that was the case. I'm Gabe Maliski. I'm with the uh, Alltag Engineers, uh, Fargo. And uh, we're um, trying to get back to our roots. So uh, we have uh, initiated a, a, a Eastern County program where uh, we're uh, basically uh, trying to help uh, counties uh, where, where, where uh, we're able to. Um, I have some propaganda here to hand it up. Right. Uh, we're basically a full service engineering firm. Um, if you need any, we uh, do a lot of DOT work, a lot of uh, uh, federal work. Um, our our original company was started in uh, 1944, and uh, uh, Mr. Altec uh, was uh, involved in uh, the uh, rural uh, electrical co-ops. Um, that's where he, he got to start, and to, to today we still do uh, a lot of uh, work for the uh, power companies, and put up power lines, design power lines, things like that. And of course, in the past uh, 20, 30, 30 years, we've also gotten into transportation. Uh, both uh, municipal and uh, county and private. And uh, um, basically, um, uh, I guess we're help, here, here to help you uh, uh, with, with uh, roads mainly, but if you, if you have some other uh, uh, things, like I see you're building the courthouse here, uh, we do have a landscape architect on staff, and um, if, uh, if you would like, if you have a question about something that we do, I can sure get the answer for you. Uh, what what we do propose, um, first of all, um, I, I guess I'm not sure if you do have a county engineer at this point. We have a road superintendent. Pardon? We have a road superintendent. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you, do you uh, hire a certain consultant? Um, yeah, KLJ. KLJ. Yeah. Um, do you have a, a, a CPI or a capital improvement plan? Typically, uh, it's a, a five-year wish list of projects that you'd like to do. Um, part of our uh, initiative, uh, we would do that for you for free. Uh, basically, you get a list of, of the projects that you would like to get, get completed in the next five years. We can put together some cost est estimates and um, basically uh, a time frame to do those. We, we, we basically have that as far as the road department goes. They have always have projects they're looking forward okay. towards, but not, not a specific, not for the whole county. We don't have an, an ETI, but okay. the road department does. I don't know if, I don't think they call it that per se, but no, they, they, they do have a list of ongoing projects looking forward. Sure, sure. And uh, that's <laughs> something that everybody should have. Uh, something else that we have is we, we have a, a really awesome uh, GIS uh, uh, part of our engineering work. Um, if uh, you, you'd be interested in something like that, like that, I'd, I'd sure would be glad to get uh, something up here to, to give you a demonstration. Um, well, that's about all I got. So, um, if anybody has any questions, I think as a part-time county commission, we would, or we do, lean heavily on the, the road superintendent. So okay. I think if, if there were any changes to be made from what we're presently doing, you know, you would probably want to stop and talk to Wayne down at the county shop. Okay. Just because he's the one that has to make it work. Sure. <laughs> We're just here once or twice a month. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I'd suggest too. Yeah, is it is he available to today? You know, I don't even, I have no idea. Oh. 
Thank you, Connie. Any other questions? No, I don't have any. Okay, appreciate your time. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I've got Wayne's number here for you if you want. Sure. Uh, maybe I don't. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I got it. Right there. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you sign anything? No, I didn't. I don't have it all. Okay. Uh, Jamie, the next thing I have on the agenda is you, you, you emailed me yesterday with a couple things you wanted to visit. Two of them have been answered. Um, I would not want to talk to you guys about my retirement. Um, Cindy replied to me that she talked to Purvis today. And that since I work for two counties, I'm only eligible in one county for retirement. Really? And that's like what the administration of the retirement goes through the same county. Right? I don't know why, but that's that was Per's answer to Cindy today. Um, the other issue, I, I didn't know that um, the letters from the building authority were addressed at the last meeting. Um, I do have a couple other things. Um, I have a new secretary. Um, she's not in order yet. I would ask that um, the county paid to have her become an ordinary. I think it's a $50 filing fee in the bond. I, I'm not sure if Cindy could tell us about that. I'm, I'm thinking it's 75. I was, think, or I was gonna say 65. But well, one is 50 and the other one I think is 75. Isn't it? The bond is 75 okay. and the staff is 50. You have to pay two different ones. You pay the bank for the bond, and then the uh, stamp to the Secretary of State's 50. Right. I think so. But and then Fargo rubber stamps, 30 yeah. bucks or whatever for the stamper. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure that's not an issue to be before us. That, there's money in your budget. Yeah. 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 Okay. I don't think that um, has to be authorized. One other issue that's been brought to my attention. Um, I've, been a, I've been accused, and, and Ron Dahl has been accused of, of doing county business um, secretly and behind everyone's back. Um, I, I will flat out admit, I went off to the state auditor this morning and visited with Bob Peters, the state auditor. Um, I don't think there's any secret about it that I, I went and, and in an email chain, the email that I sent to, to Ron was accidentally sent out, I believe, to the entire county. Um, and I'll, I'll flat out say I'm not satisfied with, with Rotunda's audit. Um, I'm not satisfied with, with I, I, I'm not satisfied personally that all my questions have been answered about what's been going on financially in the, in the county. And I think doing my due diligence as the state's attorney, I think it's well within my ability to go ahead and do that. Um, Bob Book made an open records request on my meeting this morning with Bob Peterson and, and accused, like I said, accused Ron and I of, of doing business outside of the scope of, of or secretly or outside of the scope for our employment or whatever it may be. Um, I was unaware of that conversation with, with one county commissioner was doing business. Um, it takes the majority of the county commission to vote to pass something. And if I want to go ahead and do business, I don't need to ask Bob Hook permission to do a darn thing. I think it's pretty ridiculous what just happened. Um, furthermore, the concern about the audit raises many red flags for me. What's the concern of the audit? I mean, if people have questions, clear and air is, and an audit is the best thing to do. I, I, I guess I, I personally feel, as, as a taxpaying citizen, that an audit should be done, and a, a better one than, than Rotunda. Um, and we can set all these questions aside. Mm. So there, there is no allegation that the commission was, was involved in any, any instructing you to go anywhere. No. Um, okay. Let, let me. Were, let, okay. I, if that's the case, then let's refer to Century Code eleven sixteen oh one, and this is duties of the state's attorney. 
give when required and without fee the state's attorney's opinion in writing to the county, district, township, and school district officers on matters relating to the duties of the respective offices. So Ron does have every right to consult with the state's attorney on matters concerning, on matters concerning his duties. From there, I'm not sure how the open meeting laws reflect upon that, but in my understanding, it doesn't become an open meeting unless there is unless there is a majority of the respective boards. But maybe I'm wrong on that. No, absolutely not. To, to be a meeting, there, there needs to be a quorum of the individuals and the conversation between Ron and myself is clearly not a quorum of, of the commission. Yeah. Um, I guess if, if it, any conversation that I have with, with any one individual is, I, I'll send an email out to the whole county if that's what's, what's wanted. I mean, it's, it's pretty ridiculous to throw accusations around, um, especially unfounded ones like this. Well, all I'm concerned with is that, that you have your respective duties, Bob has his, we have ours. I'm concerned with, with the fact that it was suggested that Ron did something outside his scope of his and of and his I, duty as county commissioner, and I don't believe he did. Absolutely not. I don't I'd like to address this, Mr. Chairman. Come on. Go ahead. He was brought to my attention, and I was asked to look into it. And as a sheriff, I did that. Yep. There are statements in here. Uh, I'm going to keep this quiet until I can find cause to probably trigger an audit. Uh, there's a request in here for Ron Dahl to come up with find, find abnormalities by today before Jamie left to go do this. I was here when the commission talked only about these audits and I thought there was a sad application. And then this is, for me about this, this has nothing to do with the audit, nothing. This is about the open record. We've all been accused here of doing things behind everyone's back and all this, and now here we are. It, it just reads through it, it spells out, and there, there's more, there's more. Um, I, I'm not, it, 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 I just want to bring this up on the, on the table, okay? I'm gonna keep this quiet until I can find things. He's asking Rondell to help him find things. I spoke with the treasurer and I spoke with the auditor. Neither of them have been asked questions to make answers, to answer questions about budget problems, nothing. And I guess I'll, I'll refer to Cindy and Tommy here. Uh, again, I, I don't see anywhere where this is a violation of any open meetings. No, I don't either, Bob. Records. I, I, There's open records. It's open records, absolutely. But Bob. you, but Bob. You're making, a, you're, making a, you're making an accusation of a violation of, of open records, Bob, or of open meetings. Okay. Nowhere in the Century Code is this, was that a meeting between? Maybe I can clarify, maybe I can clarify a little they're bit. They're public records. Public maybe records. Let, let's, let, okay, copies. wait a minute, let, let's, let's have clarification. First, first of all, first of all, there's a difference between an allegation of a, of a violation and an actual violation. What happened before was the Attorney General found that there was a violation. A violation of the open records laws, <laughs> first you have to ask specifically for the record, and then there's a time frame for that record to be produced. You you can't just say I want the record and there it's produced. So so if you have if you have a records request, make that of Jamie. If Jamie does not follow the protocol, then you certainly have recourse. But you cannot come in and start making allegations when you haven't even made the request correctly. So you know that. I mean, we've all been through this many, many, many times, and I know tempers are flaring here, but let's just keep it to where it, the way it's supposed to go. And if there's been a violation, there's been a violation. If there hasn't, there hasn't. And 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 it, it doesn't serve any purpose here to start pointing fingers until there's actually something that we can say was done wrong or wasn't done wrong. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I, like I said, I looked into it. I asked the question of our two elected officials over here that there was allegations made against us. It's absolutely, I've never been asked a question to reproduce answers. That's full. I talked to Mr. Peterson's office and asked if he could supply me those documents and he openly did. Troy. Yeah, I just want to add that, I mean, if anybody in this room told me they wanted to go talk to the state's auditor, I'd say that's fine. Go talk to the state's auditor. And if you need any help, I'll give you some help. So, and it, it's no different to me than when you asked me if you could talk to Steele County about uh, hiring a deputy jointly. I said, sure, talk to him. Yes, and then that was asked in an open meeting, an open meeting. But it was a, a private conversation between you and me when I told you it was fine to talk to Steele County. 
And, you know, if, if Cindy or uh, Connie would have said, I want to call the state auditor, I'd say, fine, call the state auditor. Bob, do you do your investigations in open meetings? Okay. Do you do your criminal investigations in open meetings? Absolutely. Some, some we do, yes. Yeah. And then they're all, they're all open to the public at some point. Yeah. I, I disagree with that. Well, I'd, I'd say this is an issue between the state's attorney and the sheriff's department. <laughs> you, you guys, you guys roll around. But I, I know, in no way do I see where Ron did anything other than what he's what he's obligated to do. He, he's a, he is he can talk with the state's attorney. He can talk with you. He can talk with he can talk with one of us. So, again, you guys work it out. Yeah, I hope not because I I plan to keep continuing what I'm doing. I, I don't plan to change. So. Uh, you have to let me know if you're going to file charges against me. No, I won't. I won't file charges against you. Okay. <laughs> We're okay, huh? So there's, 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 been, there's been differences and there's going to be differences. And, and we've got a lot bigger fish to fry than this, guys. There's, we've got a project here in jeopardy. I think that's going to take a lot more time and effort and, it's, and working together than trying to fight about stuff like this. Jamie, is that it? That's it. Okay. New courthouse. Ron? Yeah. And the first thing I wanted to do was just uh, read my email that I sent to Cindy. And in it, I said, with those sketches, I said, just make sure to tell everybody that these are my only my ideas. I'm sure the other four commissioners and everyone else will have a lot of very different ideas. I just want to get the discussion started. And I'm not sure if you sent that part of the message out or if... I think I did. I did. So, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, I recognize there's probably a, at least a hundred different ways of doing anything. And I don't see anything sacred. You know, I don't say this is sacred. We can't touch that. We can't talk about it. I'm completely ready and willing to talk about anything. And my suggestion is to get the discussion started. And because I think there's there should be some savings if it's possible to move social services into the new courthouse but uh, if we don't get started talking about it we're never going to know so so my suggestion really is to get the discussion started on you the got that done fella well i <laughs> guess i did <laughs> so uh, you know and, and i did out of a hundred different ways it could be done i i i did put out one sketch of it but that doesn't mean that that i'm sold on that idea it's just uh something to think about or get started talking about it, so well I, I i don't think there's any need to apologize for your opinion i mean that's what this whole <laughs> thing is that's what this whole thing is about it's yeah. five different opinions and the three of them match then that's what happens mm -hmm. so, uh, but uh, but i think i did show the ndsu extension going from one place to another and there's all kinds of other things that can be done i, I mean i probably should have shown every single office in the courthouse being relocated so that uh Nobody was singled out or left out. But <laughs> yeah, and the only thing that why I asked you to send it to everybody else is so that they can tell you why mm -hmm. they need the space that they had designated to them. Or yeah, what, what you realize, taking away the courthouses in both projects, adding up the square feet of what we have here with social services, adding that together what we currently have compared to about to what we have over there, we have double the square footage there than what we currently have. So there's no reason that we can't make this work out some way. And if it's an inconvenience to a certain extent, well, this still, we still are servants of the taxpayers. And we get by very well doing business right now with the office space we have. Even combining them will still be upgrading. It's, you know, I look at it as a family and, and they want a new TV and do they, well, I'd really like to have that TV. It'd be nice to have that TV and a new couch, but we can't afford it. This is kind of the same thing. Just because it'd be nice to have it doesn't mean it is necessarily essential. And it makes no sense to have, when we have this huge building here, to have offices spread out that we could put into there just because someone or some entity had their heart set on that particular space. We can make this work without affecting the effective use of the space and the way the county moves forward. It, it just might not be quite as convenient 
but it will work and it has to work because there's a money, there's a savings to be done by doing that. So maybe it won't be the Christmas present everybody was expecting, but it's still going to be an upgrade here from what we have. And I, I find it a little bit disheartening that, that the wishes of the employees are put above the, the needs of the taxpayers. Can I speak to that? I know I asked to be on the agenda of the extension. It seems like extension is being brought up here. And I, is that all right, Chairman Allison? Absolutely. The reason why I sent the email out that I did was to, re, you know, Sia seemed upset about the fact that, you know, I, that she was, you know, her department was being, felt like they were being, you know, told that this is your fault or whatever, or that type of thing, which wasn't the case. Not the case at all. But we did not get consulted when the email came out, and so it kind of blindsided us. So we were all kind of like, okay, and it was just a proposal, but it would have been nice to have had some discussion maybe. I didn't know it came up in a commissioner meeting that you guys were going to start looking into moving offices and doing that type of a thing. We've talked about it several times. Mm -hmm. it, Nothing yeah. has ever been brought forward. Yeah, this is where we have discussions, Jill. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's yeah. what I wanted to point out, that I just wanted to get the discussion started. Ron, Ron is a commissioner, and he is welcome to bring proposals to the oh, commission. Yes. I don't that's what that. his job is. Nice You're having it. Well, yeah, I mean, before any decision is made, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of talk about it. But. <laughs> You know, it's, I'm not wanting the office space that I'm wanting because I want some big grandio office. We have three offices we utilize right now because we don't have enough room in our current office for all that space. So, um, but there's several other reasons why we put it where we put it, but we more than willing to work with um, the commission. I know you have the final say. I just wanted to make, <coughs> put it on record that we wanted some input. Right. Well, and, and Ron was trying to start this discussion. He shouldn't have to request permission to start the discussion. Oh, I didn't and, say he had to. Yeah. And, and the tone of and the tone of your email was certainly was certainly pretty one sided. I this is I mean you have to have this office because of this and this and this. There's ways to work around this. I mean you're you're doing with less right now. I don't think I said that I have to have it because of this. Well, this. I think I said that it would have been it would be nice to discuss it because um, I can read it. The department's architect and building authority all know exactly why the offices were designed the way they were. I'm glad you read that. You realize you realize that using the building authority for the <laughs> reason to do this is, is really, really kind of silly, being that, that they were the county commissioners and they were put out of office for doing what they did. So so using using justification that the building authority thought this was a good idea isn't a good argument. They, were, they, they got put out of office for, for having their good idea. Well, they were commissioners at the time the building design was done. And, and at the time. Yeah. Yes. So, and that's what I, I referred back to. I didn't say now. I said they the voters said The voters said what they did was a bad idea. Yeah. So I just wanted to start the discussion. That's, that's all. Mm -hmm. And ask if we would have some input. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because I, I mean, it's... Uh, I guess the key question is, is moving social services to that area, and, and like John said, it seems very feasible. I don't know exactly how you could do it, but it, it's not something we should close our eyes to. <laughs> we, we, you know, I think we owe it to the taxpayers to investigate how that could be done and who it would affect and how it would affect them and everything else. I think that is absolutely true, all of those things. but. I still haven't. From from my perspective, I would like to know. You know, since we're here having this discussion, we have several department heads in the room. Um, what al what alternatives should we consider if we don't think? leaving it the way it is is one of them how else can this be done more effectively I guess would be my question you want, 
I, I don't know, because until I could sit and, and look at the plans and everybody can sit down and think of a different way of okay. doing it, it's not going to be able to be answered today. No, I, and I don't expect it to be, Cindy. Because I just think... We, we, for my office, I do need that storage. If there's some other way to work it so that I keep the storage, I don't know. Yep. You know? Well, I think, Ron, that was just one suggestion. I think there's, I think there's a multitude of other ways to do it rather than... I mean, there, mm -hmm. there's ways to do this without affecting... Yeah, your, your office could probably stay right where it is, and, you know, and there's other things. I, I think the biggest thing I suggested was moving the state's attorney, and I don't think that was probably your, your first choice to move into those offices, but, but I know you, would, you indicated that it might work. But, I mean, it, that, that's square footage-wise, you're probably affected by it. You are affected. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm going from probably the nicest office in the courthouse to something that's yeah. not as desirable, but... In, in the interest of, I, I think, I think it'll be a, a big money saver for the county. Um, yeah, it seems like. And I think it's, you know, of course I'd love to have a big office. Anybody would love to have a big office, but I, I, I think it could be done differently. Is, is the combination of the state's attorney's office and the what is set out now to be the county agent's office, is that sufficient size for social services? I don't know. I think we're happy with that, I mean, I, I did a rough square footage, and it looks like it increases your square footage from what you have by about 70%. Oh, you know, because you would all, because of course you would always have, always, you would have use of the hallway too. There would have to be a wall coming across the hallway to partition it off so that it would be, <coughs> CA indicated to me on the telephone that she thought it was a big enough space. Okay. Her concern was she didn't want this to be presented as if she was advocating it from a standpoint of just getting along, you know. And, it, she, and obviously she didn't bring this up. Yeah, you know, first she, she never talked to me about yeah, anything. That's, she was a concern that she was going to cause some angst among the, the county employees and and she certainly didn't want to do that. Okay. With that said, well, the I'm, space is large enough. Yeah. If, in fact, we can reconfigure the rest of the building to meet our needs. Okay, I have a question then for Jill. If, Jill, the, the existing, what's set out to be the tax director's office, if, if there was some walls put in there so that you had a private office, would that be sufficient in size to do what you need to do? to look at the plans, but the reasoning behind the private office, just so everybody understands here, it's we do everything, or not everything, but a lot on Blackboard and webinar, and I mean, a lot of my training and a lot of my staff's training is done over the computer. When we're all in big, one big room, it makes it very hard. I took, just for an instance, grain drying training. I was supposed to be one of the agents that was to get certified in doing that. I had, I think it was seven training sessions, and I counted that four of them, I did not get all the way through because I had, you know, interruptions from people coming in, the phone going off, because in the one big space like that, it's very hard to concentrate and do your job. And I think it's a savings to the county when we don't have to go somewhere to have the training and we can do it in-house. Aren't, aren't there conference rooms in that building? Well, most everything's on the computer, so if I have to, I guess I can move my computer in there, but I do two of them a week minimum of May to October, so it's a lot of... Right, but I think in that in that jury room, isn't there a big screen TV in there? I mean, there must be a PC in there well, or something. Well, that's Ivan, yeah, but it, it comes down to producers, too, when they come in, if I have to take them in another room, if they're coming in and have questions on spray drift, if there's, you know, things like that. I don't like having to get up and move them to another room. I mean, I, I guess we can do that, but... Um, Yeah, it appears like the existing tax director's office. It isn't quite as big, but there there's certainly there's certainly room to put a, a private office in the corner of it. One of the other reasons we were down on that end of the hallway is for access to get in and out with our 4-H um, uh, stuff. I mean, I have 
about 15 big totes that go out back and forth out. I'm constantly carrying my equipment out for flea beetle collection in the summer and my shovels, things like that. Um, and I just, the idea of tracking mud in the front door, at least if I'm down a little bit further to the tax director's office, I won't be hauling that mud in the front door because I hate to walk through. And I try to take my shoes off if I can, but I don't think it looks very good for the agent to be walking barefoot all the way through the um, front of the courthouse. And just for access to haul things in and out is my concern because there is a lot of, everybody can attest to this, we haul a lot of things in and out. So the tax director's office might might work. Look, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, and and then if we left the auditor's office where and the treasurer's office where it is, really all we then we we have the state's attorney's offices, but Jamie's willing to to work there. Then we just have to have somewhere for the tax director. And I can't believe that between the auditor's office, the treasurer's office, and the recorder's office, there isn't room for that to put the tax director, especially on a part-time basis. Um, yeah, yeah. And I just saw some advantage, you know, of having a door between the auditors and treasurers. It's kind of, and I, you don't have that there. But we can't. Well, I know. Brought up. But but that's why I. The only reason that I suggested moving the auditor to this office right. was that there was a door between the treasurer and the tax director's office. So I said, oh. well, if you move, why can't we? if you move the auditor don't, there? There's wiring oh, and really? conduits. <laughs> they said that we couldn't move okay. it because we talked about it. Well, that that's that's I'm not taking that as fact. We can put, we'll go put an odd doorway through there. If it's if there's a regulation, we can't do it. Fine, but. If there there is no physical if there's uh, if there's no physical barrier to doing that, it's a wall. It's a stud wall. I know the tax director does, and I know it's not required for them to have privacy, but they do do homestead credit, and it's just nice. So if there's some way you could figure that in somewhere, I mean, there's we're stuff we're, we're I think we're open for any we're open for any suggestions as long as everything gets put in that building. I don't think. If you want to put everybody's office in one and have a handball court, I don't think anybody cares. <laughs> it's just we want everything under one roof. It, 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 the taxpayers are going to demand that. Um, we have 150 in that welfare building, so what does that mean? Hmm? There's 150 to 1,000 into the welfare building, so what does that mean? So we could sell it for 250,000? You it, think it, we could get that? Well, <laughs> it, it, the, how much we have into it is, is really of no consequence. It's what it keeps costing to have it. So uh, what it's worth is what it's worth. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, that shouldn't be a consideration. We have 250 or 150 into it, so we have to keep using it. If we don't, if we don't keep using it and we bring it over here, we'll save money. So it's a savings. It's a savings if we just shut it down and let it sit there. I think Orv can probably tell us how much that building might sell for. Maybe not right off the top of your head, but. Whatever a buyer will offer. Yep, there you go. <laughs> but, but I mean, you know, you're right. We're going to lose money out. There's no doubt about that. But we're going to save money by not having to operate it. Connie. I'm thinking about moving forward. Could we have department heads meet with one or two of you guys and go through and try and figure out where we because I know, just looking at the, these DES rooms, I'm assuming the storage room maybe doesn't have computer hookups and you know things that Jamie will need when he's in an office. So some of that needs to be taken into consideration. And just to, as a starting point, have the department have to meet with, maybe we have to bring in the architect or one of the construction guys eventually to figure out yeah. You know, but if we can get a start on it, at least. Yeah, that, that, I have to admit, I was hoping to avoid the cost of the architect, mm -hmm. but it may not be possible yeah. um, okay. with either Kraft or Michael Burns. But uh, mm -hmm. it seems like we could sit down and figure it out. But if not, I mean, that's something we have to decide. I think I remember from last meeting, there's 198 computer hookups. In I think it was 192. 192. <laughs> okay. So there must so, I don't think you, you. I don't think you have to go very far to plug a computer. To but that doesn't mean they're in. they are in the <clears throat> storage room. I, yeah. You know. Needless, nevertheless, there's enough room to get everything in there. It just might not be in this same configuration. And, and you guys got to work there. Figure it out. Well, that, that, that was just an idea as a start. If we can get together and try and figure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But any carpenter can put a doorway in it. It's a stud walls. I mean, it is that. <clears throat> so 
So which one of you girls are going to be in charge of organizing, organizing this? I think Annie was asking one of us to meet, to go through it with them. Yeah, but it, it seems to be a lot easier if they just go through it and bring it to us rather than the other way around. That is a fact. <laughs> if, our, if our only requirement is we get everything under one roof, it seems to me that we should be able to figure it out. You know more the needs than anybody else. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can follow meeting. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else have anything on that subject? Okay. Uh, we did the abatement of taxes. Next thing on the agenda is existing courthouse. I presume you've all gotten that response from Debbie Lacombe. Is that what we're going to talk about? I don't know if every no, I don't think so. I, I don't think anybody's got that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, it, 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 it was just a, just an email between uh, on the demolition of the old courthouse. And just to elaborate, um, Debbie Lacombe said she laid out the procedures for demolishing the old courthouse if you wanted to. Oh, so you can't do it. So well, you don't have to do anything more. Or? No, no. I, I mean, she made it very clear. If we do damage the existing courthouse, we'll have to repay every penny of the federal grant. She said the proper procedure was to go to the North Dakota State Historical Society, have them rescind that their previous letter requiring maintenance on the courthouse and requiring that it not be demolished. And then that letter would go to the DES. The DES would forward that to FEMA, and FEMA would have to agree to reverse their stance on it also. You want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, sure. No. The response or the whole thing? Do you want oh, whatever? Do you want Bob Hooks from yeah. to Jamie? It's up to you. Huh? I mean, well, I mean, yeah, we, yeah, it's we can we can put it in a, a nutshell. It's yeah, that's probably good. It's it's public information. So Bob wants public information. This yeah. is from Bob Hook to Jamie Tennyson. The only correspondence we have had with NDDES is on this issue are the letters by the North Dakota DES getting a no adverse effect back from the North Dakota State Historical Society. The key thing here to remember in this, in your request, is there is no issue here with the North Dakota DES over the old courthouse's future. There has there never has been. As you will see in those letters, the only involvement in the North Dakota DES had, the only involvement the North Dakota DES had was to inquire if the Griggs County Commission was planning to tear down the old courthouse based on an allegation made by someone in Griggs County to the North Dakota State Historical Society that the commission was covertly planning to demolish the building in June of 2013. None of that is true, and the North Dakota <coughs> State Historical Society signed off on it as no adverse effect by the EOC project. The designation of being on the National Historic Registry comes with no regulatory oversight or enforcement power by anyone to tell the citizens of Griggs County what they can or cannot do with the building. There is a process that needs to be followed to tear the building down to include having the building documented by a professional architectural firm experienced in his historic preservation, a majority vote by the citizens, a determination of condemnation of the building, condition, or other. The major point to remember is the courthouse will not be torn down because of the EOC. The old courthouse was not demolished to build the EOC. The old courthouse was not adversely affected by the EOC construction. The North Dakota State Historical Society signed off on the historic preservation part of the EHP of the grant application and blessed the building of the EOC in that location. FEMA signed off on the grant <coughs> based off the input from the North Dakota State Historical Society as the EOC will have no adverse effect on the old building. The North Dakota DES and FEMA will have no future investment in the old courthouses courthouse's lifespan once the EOC grant was awarded. EOC is built and the EOC grant is closed in July of 14. This is a standalone issue. At the time of the grant award, 
after the D North Dakota State Historical Society signed off, the issue of the old courthouse was done. All parties signed off and the grant was awarded. It will be the current county commissioner's job or a future commissioner's job to determine the future of the building. This will be a separate matter from the EOC grant application and award. I have attached all the correspondence I have over this matter and will find the info I looked up online again and share it with you too. And Ron Dahl forwarded this to Debbie Lacombe at the North Dakota DES and her response is, Ron, Bob is incorrect in his statements that this is a standalone issue. FEMA, as required by law, has to look at the project, including the fate of the old courthouse, as a whole. Bob has been told several times that Griggs County, as the grant recipient, must comply with all applicable state, federal, and local environmental and historic preservation requirements. You will need to contact the State Historical Society and get a letter in writing from them which they must also send to us, removing the condition that the existing courthouse is to be maintained and that the county commission agrees not to demolish or damage the historic structure. Once we have that letter, we, the North Dakota DES, will then send a request to FEMA to reevaluate the environmental and historic preservation requirements. Yep. Any activity in regard to the existing courthouse undertaken without approval from both the State Historical Society and FEMA will result in the loss of federal funding. And the only reason that the State Historical Society gave permission to build the old courthouse was with the caveat that we maintain it, or the very new courthouse was with the caveat that we maintain it. They always said, we can't do this unless we maintain the old courthouse. Yep. There's no way they're going to rescind their original decision. So, well, they may, but we can't we, just do whatever we want. We have no, to request it. But if you look at their previous correspondence, the only way they signed off on this was with. I know. <laughs> so they've already stated. They've already stated. Where'd they, Bob you know, go? I but we need to have that entered into the records because there seems to be some no, mis no, that's not there that. seems to be some that's miscommunication. Yes, I heard about this. There are some feelings going around about this too. <laughs> so be. has everybody seen this? I yeah. haven't. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can make cop I can email it to well, you. What's that's the response to Ronnie Halverson's claim that our court was gonna oh, move to New Rockford. No. Yeah, I did I did see that. Yeah. Okay. That'll have to get entered next that'll have to get entered next. I'm sure Ron was just mistaken. Ron Halverson. Yeah. <laughs> Ron Don. <laughs> no, Ron, Ron Halverson was just mistaken. But uh, no, on the existing courthouse, all I was going to mention really was that, that I know I had a motion oh, quite a while ago <laughs> about spending $600 for those uh, mold tests downstairs. And I had read that proposal wrong because I think you kind of questioned that too. That. I had to, I should have added together six hundred dollars and six hundred and twenty five dollars and the total cost was twelve twenty five. And, and I called him on it and I said, you know, am I reading this right that you'll do it for six hundred? And he said, No, you have to add the six twenty five to it. And I haven't done it yet. I don't even know if we need a motion. I guess we don't really need a motion. I mean maybe we need to think more about what we're doing with the old court house before we even do that. So, but I just wanted to tell you that's why I haven't done those whole tests. <laughs> St. Alexis quarterly report, can you help us with that? Where you want to know? What is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> we prescribe to them for any emotional problems for the families. Okay. Alcoholic, depression. Sure. Okay. Yep. Okay. There are EPA? No, what is it? Um, there's a name for it anyway. Any questions? You pay that on an as-needed basis, and no, there's no. We pay it quarterly, two hundred fifty. Okay, and then whatever services are used. Then on they top gave of us that. a report on. Sure. And, and it comes That's why they said there's no report because there weren't. Social Security health insurance. Okay. Sure. So. Yeah, I, you paid it. You today. don't need a motion. You just need to. No, it's just a report just, to you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Could I, Troy? Could I ask the 
Could I ask you social, something about social services in the building? Are there any requirements as far as privacy? Um, and what, how, what, how will that pertain to this? To this, maybe you haven't even looked at the blueprint there, but we're talking about the, the west end. And if we put a if we put a hallway across east end, the east yeah, yeah the east end. I get mixed up. Oh, challenge. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we have looked. Yeah, Jam's always pointing, and they were along. We have looked at it to see if it would meet our needs. When you ask if there are certain things that are like required, it's when we're interviewing clients and things like that, we can't have them just out in the middle of nowhere. We mm -hmm. do have to have it behind closed doors. Um, you know, we did look at it. It, um, it would need one wall if you're willing to do something so that Jan and I could each have clients at the same time. Um, but it, we could make it work. And that's, that's, you looked at both the, or were you just looking at the state's attorney's office or were you looking across at the We're looking board? at both, yeah. you know, the state's attorney's area yeah. right. and the extension area, yeah. um, because that was what we had seen in the proposal. Um, you know, I don't know if there's something else to try to, you know, to make it work, but it, we won't, I shouldn't say it this way, trying to all squeeze into just the state's attorney's area would be really way too tight. We wouldn't, I don't think we could do it. Yeah. You'd have trouble meeting the HIPAA laws. Exactly. I think. Yeah, that's cool. The yeah. social worker, too, and parent aid, they meet with their family. Yeah. And obviously that has to be confidential. And, 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 and there, if there was a wall, it gives you another private entrance on the east side, which was the reason that I think Ron picked that probably. Think of that yeah. yeah, so you do. You, they wouldn't have to come through the entire corridor. There's a private entrance on the mm -hmm. yeah. east side. Yeah. So, like I said, if you're willing to put an extra wall in, you know, we were looking in the state's attorney's space where there's the, the large folding door. Yeah, the one that's like a folding wall. If that could be a solid wall. Then Jan and I could each have offices there. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure if we can get everybody in there, we can make it work. Okay. And a door in that wall, if at all possible, because we do a lot of our work together. Um, it's not that we have to have it, it's just if you're willing to do that. We need the wall. When it was brought up, the eligibility on one side, which is so different than the social work parent aid, would then be on the other side, which would actually be better than what we have right now. Because you talk about coming in the hall and Johnny says the wall, then they can be directed one way without the other side if there's anyone in the waiting room would not see them coming in for that. And well, certainly imagine the Looks like you're on the right path because your mediator is nodding her head, so. <laughs> Connie. <laughs> 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 Maybe she was falling asleep. <laughs> I, think, I think it might be Orb's nap time too. <laughs> okay. Thank you, girls. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and feel free to. I mean, any suggestions? Like I said, we got off on the wrong foot, but it, it, it's got to be done. They're, they're, the taxpayers aren't going to allow us to have things scattered all over the city when I we have room here. The issue was can this work out? If we're, we're obviously the ones that have to move in, yeah. what do you need instead of, it kind of came across as, this is what we're doing. And, and so, well, what do we need? Well, maybe, Ron's not the king. He can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need to hone up my communication <laughs> skills. <laughs> and, and we do totally see the savings that can happen yeah. because we know the extra costs that it takes to have us in another building. I mean, we we just were talking about one, the maintaining the fiber optic line down there. Well, if, if that isn't there, there's no need to maintain that. Well, we look at snow removal, insurance on the building. We can go on and on and on about the extra Fuel, costs. light, yeah, utilities, insurance. Right, and so we totally do understand that we were just taken by surprise because we've been chopped off way at the beginning. <laughs> you know, we were not a part of it. Plus, Janice is a notary, so we'd have two notaries. On. <laughs> well, that just proves you were talking to the wrong people at the beginning. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll make it work. That's understandable. Okay, we digress. Yeah. Anything else for the good of the order? Or the citizens, for that matter? I move we adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. Is there any discussion? Is there any discussion? Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Adjourn the meeting at 343 p.m. May 2nd, right? May 2nd, the next meeting day. Is that a Friday? 1 p.m. So. Yep. Next meeting, May 2nd, Friday, 1 p.m. <laughs> It, hopefully in the commissioner's chamber. Yeah, yeah. And, and I'll be here for the May 2nd meeting, but I'll be gone for any special meeting that you might have next week. You guys or the week put after. Back together, yeah, or? we'll help put it back together. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, okay. Well, I'll just, uh, like I say, I won't miss the regular. I can't tear now. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting day. The electric can't get here soon. Yeah, good point. At least we'll get a feel in the primary. Well, yeah, and that's where I was tempted, you know, when I was talking to just to tell them what was it. Never mind. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I've said enough. There's no doubt. That's funny. And that's what it's going to be. Okay, that has to be all the other way. Yeah. Just to see. Ron. You got to lift it up. There's the wire needle. No. Where's it going? This way we have to come. Just knew it's supposed to be there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't know. Where's the other chair going? Right there. Oh, okay. Which one is that? These are all royal rollers. And now we are. I wonder if one. No. Back here? Back there. Back there. Back there. Thank <laughs> you.